Sorry. <laughs> we're uh, we're studying out the book of Romans, and we're in chapter three. We we left off. We're going to start in verse twenty-five, Romans three twenty-five, in our outline. Uh, we're doing the book of Romans outlines for a study that I put together so that uh, to help te teach people how to read their Bibles. And also it has helped me to continue to read my Bible. I'm up to chapter 16, and we're on 3. 16 is the last chapter. And then we're going to start the book of Galatians after that. So uh, I plan on doing this until I until I pass this earth, this studying the Bible and sharing it with y'all, or whoever, whoever wants to hear it. Okay, we're in verse 25. Chapter 3. It says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. I like it says, Whom God has set. Um, and interesting, God has set Christ to be something called the propitiation of our sins. Um, but I like what it says. It says it's set forth. God has set forth. And that, that word in Greek is prototemei. Prototemei means he has a purpose. And I like that because he had a purpose to provide a propitiation. So what's a propitiation? What does your version say? Because that's a strange word. We don't use the word propitiation very much. Very much. Uh, so what is propitiation, and what does your version say possibly in chapter 3 and verse 25 of Romans? Mine says propitiation. Yours does say propitiation. What <coughs> version is that one? <coughs> NIV or? ESV. Uh, ESV. Yeah, ESV. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That's an interesting thing that none of these versions have a have a definition of propitiation. Now, what amplify, verse was that? 25. Uh, verse twenty-five of Romans three. Three, three the word twenty-five. Pro, the word propitiation it comes uh, in the King James says, "For whom God has set forth, He's got purpose to be a propitiation." Mine says in the TLV version, it says, "God set forth Yeshua as the atonement through faith in His blood to show His righteousness." In passing over sin already committed. That's that. And if you give me just a second. I like that one. Because that one has... has that would be atonement for sin. Atonement. Right? Yeah. Propitiation is atonement. Well... And then we have on the NLT. Do you want to read that? Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I want you all to do. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when, we, when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in the times past. Right. Okay, the word in, in, in Greek is halasterion. Halasterion. And it means an atoning victim. It means the lid of the Ark of the Mercy Seat. The root word means to atone. So that one version said the atoning sacrifice. So the mercy seat, the lid of the mercy seat. Do y'all know what the ark was? What's an ark? Are we talking about the box? The coffin? The box? Hey, you just said it. You said a coffin, didn't you? Did you know when you look up the word ark, it says it's a coffin? So when we're talking about the mercy seat, that's where we died. You got it? Yes. That's where the blood was shed. That's where the atoning sacrifice was. That's what propitiation means. Uh, it, it was an atoning victim to appease an angry God. Now some people say, well, God's not a God of anger. That, isn't he? I mean, God has reason to be angry with us. <coughs> and that's why we need a propitiation. Okay? An, an atoning sacrifice is what we need. Uh, this mercy seat is only acceptable, it says here, through what? In verse 25. We're going to study this. This propitiation is only available through what? Faith. Believing in Jesus Christ. Faith in His blood. Blood. Right? Faith is pistis, assurance, belief in truth. It's important that we believe in the truth. It's 
That's why it's important that we're truthful, and that's why all liars go to heaven. Uh, all liars go to hell. <laughs> but God says every let, 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 let God be true and every man a liar. So here we are back at the propitiation. I need a propitiation because I'm a liar. Uh huh. I had, this, I had this argument with somebody this last week. George knew I did. I called somebody a liar because they were. And this guy says, no, I'm not no liar. I says, well, God says everybody's a liar. Let him be true and every man be a liar. Right. So, and all liars will have their place in the pit of hell. Exactly. So we need a propitiation since we're all liars. Yep. How many people in here have never lied? <laughs> Come on, raise those you know? hands. It does. It really gets you. What if it's just a little white lie? Yeah. A lie is a lie. Still need the propitiation. It's like a little guys with little white 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 lies are going to be standing right next to the guys with the big lies. Right. Faith in His blood. In His blood. It was this big. What blood? What blood? The blood of Christ. Right. Amen. Why? What? Why is blood so important? And what does blood do? Well, first of all, blood. I mean, if we just get to the basics of it. Blood is life. You know, without your blood, you have no life. No blood, no life. You're lifeless. Right. Right. And I mean, and then we go back into the sacrifice. You know. Physically, I like to think about this. You know, blood brings oxygen to your brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your brain won't work without your blood. Exactly. Nothing will work without the blood. Nothing will work without the Nothing. blood. Nothing. Because if it does, if it, if it, this is even more deep. If you start thinking about it, if blood ceases to flow to a particular organ or limb, it dies. It dies. Yes. And and our blood is corruptible. It is constantly dying and had to be renewed. Yes. Jesus' blood was was shed once and for all. For all. It doesn't have to be renewed. We have to have new blood renewed. If we lose a lot of blood out of us. Our, our bodies are going to have to recreate it or they're going to have to give us a transfusion, you know. So that's the way it works with blood. Now, his blood, it says here, his blood declared his righteousness. Declare here is indexus, demonstrates with proof. His blood demonstrates with proof God's righteousness, his dikaio sune. It, what is acceptable, God, and just. And also, and he talks about God's righteousness. And uh, I noticed that when Paul speaks of God and Christ, he, he, it, it, all, all, it seems to mingle together where it's just the same. You know, you, 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 he talks about God and Christ, but then all of a sudden God is Christ. So he's very, very point here and has proof. He always gives us proof. Okay, this, this uh, righteousness, this diakot, uh, Kaiosune is atonement, faith, blood righteousness. Blood righteousness leads to remission. Remission. Now, every, when I, I've talked this before about remission of sins, what do you think remission of sins is? I always thought remission was kind of like with, with with cancer, but it's not like that. No, it's not. Because uh, remission with cancer. Uh, you know, you're being healed, hopefully, you know. But remission here is paresis. And when I looked it up, it meant passing over. And uh, I thought that very interesting because when we go back to the atonement and uh, uh, the death angel passed over uh, during the plagues of Egypt, <coughs> if you had the blood on the doorpost, what happened? You were passed, you were passed, over. passed over. See, the same here. If you have the blood on your heart, your sins are going to be passed over. Because we can say they're not there, but in reality we know they are. Right. We know they are. God can't see them. The problem with it is, Dale, the devil knows them. <coughs> and the devil will tell your wife what you've done last week. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're... Okay. <laughs> we don't even have to go like that. How many of us have asked for forgiveness on something? Uh -huh. And here, maybe a week later, something starts to stir in our heart again. It's like, oh, Father, you know, and you start wanting to ask for forgiveness again. But if we really believe God for what he's saying to be true, he says he's forgiven us. Once, we, once we've asked for forgiveness, he's, asked, he's forgiven us and he has tossed it away. Yes. He's not even reminded of it. So what the enemy does is he 
He's the accuser, right? He comes and he says, hey, Keith, do you remember what you did? And then all of a sudden you have that condemnation, that shame that that comes against you again. You go and you repent again. Yeah. And the Lord looks at you like, what are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. But it's the enemy that allows, we allow the enemy to kind of stir in our heart that we are wrong, that we are unworthy when we've already been cleansed. Amen. Amen. Now, remission uh, has to do with sins uh, that, that, that are of the past, especially the past. Um, because it says there, it says it specifically, for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Uh, the word forbearance is anoche. An uh, for the anoche is tolerance. Do you know God tolerates you? Yeah, <laughs> He tolerates you. Yeah, He does. Let me read read this last in mind. It says, "He is divine forbearance. He had passed over former sins." Yeah. Okay. God by the blood is able to tolerate our sins. We shouldn't tolerate them. No. Okay. That brings us to verse 26. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. Declaring. I like that word declaring in, 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 uh, when I looked it up in Hebrew. Indexis. E-N-D-E-I-X-I-S. It means proving. He proves, he says, at this time. <coughs> what time? <coughs> this time. Present. Yes, this time. Present time. The word actually in Greek, this time is karios, and it means a short while. Uh, his righteousness, we already studied that word, that he might be just, Dikaios, D-I-K-A-I-O-S, holy. That's one word that means holy, just. Hagios is the other word for holy. Since he is the only just one and the only one who can justify, who will he justify? Tells you in that verse 26. He will justify those who believe. That's have assurance in, pistis. In Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. And is it is it that easy? All you gotta do is believe in Jesus. It sounds it, it sounds so easy, it doesn't it? It is. That's the problem. I can't believe that men have made this so hard for everybody. After you start reading it, it's so easy to say, "Okay, I'm a sinner. I need God." Right. And He's there for me. And He's done everything. He's done it all. You know, not just a portion of it. He's done everything. everything. Okay, verse 27. He goes on to say, okay, now that you know this stuff, where is the boasting then? Is it excluded and by what law? Of works? Nay, by the law of faith. Now, boasting. Kauchesis. Uh, K-A-U-C-H-E-S-I-S. Where of I may glory. That's, that's what it means. I may glory, right? Paul asked, what do we in ourselves, or I, I, me, 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 have to me, boast me. about? Do I have anything to boast about now that I know that I need a propitiation for my sins, and he has, he has passed over my sins and has provided the blood so that he can tolerate me? God tolerates me because of his son's blood. Not because of me and my good works or my beliefs or my study habits or my prayer life. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's none of those things. It's because God loves us. Again, he asks, he answers his own question. The boasting, is the boasting excluded? Ek leo, which means to shut out. And how is boasting shut up or shut out? By your knowledge of and following the law? Or is it by your works? No. He says, nay. Ouche. How about that one? Greek. Ouche. Nay. <laughs> Ouche. See, I can see him tell a little kid that. Ouche, ouche, ouche. 
Okay. It's excluded. Uh, let's see why it works. Your boasting is shut out by the law of faith. Paul introduces a new kind of law there. Yeah, mine says, uh, but by the principle of faith. The principles of faith. The law of faith. Uh, okay. Joyce, would you pass out the 12 laws of faith? Now, what is the law of faith? I'm going to read something out of Hebrews chapter 11. We're not going to study Hebrews until a long time from now, so I'm going to use this. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report, and through faith we understand that the world, worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So as I was studying... Uh, Studying the law of faith, I started looking in the on the internet, basically, and trying to find out where the laws of faith were found, and I found a whole bunch of laws. And I thought I would uh, read these laws of faith since we, we studied the book, the, the, the chapter 11 in Hebrews 1 through 3. Okay, we have the law of existence. It says you must believe that God is. And that he is active with regard to you personally. There is the law of just providence. You must believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. There is the law of the invisible. You must be prepared to believe in things beyond your experiences of your senses. In things that have never happened before in your world. There's the law of future preparation. You must believe that God is working for you and preparing things in advance for the people he loves who trust him. Amen. There's the law of endurance. You must be prepared to wait patiently until God's time and purposes are fulfilled. Faith hangs in there. You have the law of assured conviction. The ability to see the mountain-sized problem as a mere acorn in God's hand. To acknowledge that you have an answer with certainty. There's the law of incomplete knowledge. Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. There's the law of reliance on rhema. Rhema is the word of God. Okay. Abraham believed God's personal rhema word to him. And it was counted to him as righteousness. The rhema word is the working word. Exactly. It's not the, it's not the word that we read. It's the word that's working, right? It's the now word. It's the now word. It is. Okay. The law of heavenly ambition. Faith is directed into God's purpose and to God's ends and cannot functionally properly if focused on the here and now. Faith seeks the city that is to come. There's the law of possibility. All things are possible with God. Even raising Isaac from the dead. There's the law of renunciation. Faith operates in renouncing all that is not faith. In grasping God's purpose, says only faith is uncontaminated by the courts of Pharaoh and the ambitions of this world. And the law of conquest. Eternal, external in conquering Canaan, internal in resisting persecution and testifying of God. God's, the faith does not submit to circumstances. Boy, that's a good one there. Faith does not submit to circumstances. All right. What's next? Verse 28, chapter 3 of Romans. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. We conclude, uh, and Paul uses this particular word, and I don't, I don't. I, it's kind of interesting how, in, in the King James, they, they will, they will uh, uh, translate it differently. This it says conclude, but it says logio, logizomai. That's what the word about logic to reckon. When you see Paul saying "I reckon," he's saying logizomai. When he says, logically speaking, this is what it is. Yeah, logically speaking, this is a logical way to think. This is a way to think, and you can count on this. Uh, it is where our word logic comes from. 
Uh, he says that it's a logical conclusion is that man is only justified by faith apart from any deeds. That deeds, the word deeds there is ergon. When we get our word ergonomics, it, it, it means works. That includes any rituals mentioned in the law. Do not be deceived. Galatians 5, 4, we're going to study that after we finish this book. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And how many men and women don't even know they're fallen from grace because they're living by the law? Yeah. They think that's going to get them there. Especially rituals. Rituals. Some people think that doing communion saves you. Yeah. I mean, they really do. Some people think that you can't get saved without being baptized in some physical water. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an element of the earth. I don't think anything on earth saves me. And here it says that I, I can't save myself either. That's a good one. Okay, it becomes no effect to you, though, if you live by the law. Christ is not any, any good to you. Okay, here's some more questions from Paul. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the, of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Okay. Who is the God? Who is the God? The God of? Who is the God? The God of? Is he the God of just just Christians? No. Just, Everybody. Just Jewish? No. Mine says, since God is one, he set right the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Through faith. Of course, God is God over all, even if they do not desire him to be so. That's true. That's my, that's my comment. God's God over everybody, and even if they don't like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I think that's why when some people get in trouble, they go, oh, God, how can you get me in this situation? Ten. He didn't you know? do it. <laughs> they say, I've heard that. Oh, yeah. Okay, you didn't want God before. Why do you want Him now? You know, question Him now, and you're in trouble. You know. Okay, verse thirty says, "Seeing it is one God, who shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith." Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Okay, seeing epiaz per a p e i p e r. Sometimes I wonder how they say these words. <laughs> they, they, put, they put all these vow, uh, these these uh, vows together. You know, it's like, okay, we don't talk that way. Indeed, the cause, that's what it means. Seeing, seeing, since it is one God, not many, who will justify the circumcision, the Jews. And how are they how are they justified? It says by the faith of Abraham. Did I miss one, Joyce? Yep. Which one is that one? One God. Oh, that's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> one God. She's paying attention. You know, that's good. Oh, she always does. I know oh. she does. I know she always does. She's the one who tells me when I've goofed up, too. So. Uh, he will justify the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, the heathens, through faith, and we have the handout for one God. Now, this is our exercise. We have enough time to do this exercise before we conclude the Sunday School lesson this week. One God. In other words, y'all pick out one of these and uh, share it. Have you ever had a discussion with somebody that only believes in one God and does not necessarily believe in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Who are Christians? I know. You know who I'm talking about. You know exactly who I'm talking about. And they will argue these scriptures what we got right here. There's bunches of them. And this is just a handful of them. You know, so share one of these scriptures with me, and I'll, we'll talk about it. Deuteronomy six four. Okay. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's one Lord, and the first thing to do is hear. Mm-hmm. He's one God, one Lord. Who's got another one? Deuteronomy four thirty five. To you it was shown that you might know that the Lord is God. There is no other beside Him. And you know, that's the argument I've heard. Is they say, well, if he's one God, he doesn't have another bit beside him. How can be Jesus be beside him? I've heard that before. How do you answer that? How do you answer that? Well, uh, I always use Colossians 2.9. Okay. Uh, 
Okay? Right, right. There you go. Very good. So that's, that's important to know your scriptures. I mean, you don't want to argue with people. Uh, it doesn't even matter. They can believe that and they'll still go to heaven. Because it's the blood. It's the blood. Okay, Ephesians 4 6. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in him you all. Wow. These are all really good scriptures right here. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32 39. See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. All right. Who's got another one? These are good. Jude 125, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. All right, that's a good prayer there. That's the way we should end our prayers. There's only one wise God. Yes, I have Psalm 816. Okay. For thou art great and does wondrous things, thou art God alone. God alone. Ephesians 4, 6. One God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Wow. Yeah, go ahead. Please. I was going to say, did somebody read? Because I was a little distracted. Revelation 1 8? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I am the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega, says, and the dying Elohim, who is, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Yeah, and that, that proves that Jesus Christ is also God. Well, there's only one God. And I don't believe that God was the Father, became the Son, and became the Holy Spirit. Did you ever hear that, Tim? What was that? I don't believe that God was the Father, became the Son, and became the Holy Ghost, because I've heard that in some denominations, too. Uh, and I have something to talk about that, though. There's a problem with that teaching, period, because if Jesus was standing in the river Jordan, and he heard a voice from heaven, the Father. But he's here, it can't be him, right? So, But then the Holy Spirit comes down in the shape of a dove and lands on him. <coughs> yeah. you know? So here we have the three distinct Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, picture of three and one in the river Jordan, you know? Yeah, all visible, basically. All very visible, all, yes. but Yeah, visible at the same time. And, it's, and then it, we don't need to be arguing Trinity. We just know there's a triune God. We all are triune beings. Right? Spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. God's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He patterned us after Him. We are like Him. And that's one of the ways we are. We are a triune person. Because you can kill the body. And the soul's going to live on. You can, you can destroy the body like as in a paraplegic, and the mind is still going to go on. Yeah. That's what's bad about being paraplegic. There's a human being inside that man. Yeah. Yeah. Just cousin. like you and me that can't move. Yep. And that's why we should be compassionate toward people that are ill. Yes. And have, you know, disabilities. Okay. So we have one mediator, the Savior, the Father. Hear, O Israel, the first of all commandments. The devil also believes in the only wise God, I and the Father, that you may believe no one can. According to all, you are great. None after me who formed the earth. None God but one. Over all, three that testify. The first, the last, and Alpha and Omega. Yeah, I enjoyed that particular word study I did. And that brings us to the conclusion of this week's lesson. Did we make it to the very end? No, I didn't. One guy, I got one more verse. I got one more verse, which is 31. Romans 3, 31 says, Do we then make void the law of God through faith? Through faith, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Uh, Paul still questions what he was teaching. And we should always do that because somebody's going to question you. So you should question yourself about what you believe in and, and make sure you know. Uh, Paul anticipates the opposition that was coming. Is the law void through faith? They were going to say that to him. You're saying the law the law's no good no more. 
And he's void, uh, katar jao, which means to render idle or cease or put away. And he answers it. He says, God forbid. What does faith, what does love?